morning for everyone. Good morning, Paul. And I think you all can agree that this is a great day to worship our God. Amen. So let's all stand before we worship our God. Amen. I just want us to turn to our neighbors around them and tell them, I'm glad to see you here today. Amen. Amen. So let's all pray. God, we just want to thank you for this day. Indeed, you are glorious, Father. Indeed, you will be lifted high in this place, Lord. You ought to be glorified. You are beautiful, Lord. You are majestic. You deserve all the praises and all the adoration that we can give you, God. So let nothing stand in our way this day, Father. Let us cast aside all our cares, all our worries, all our fears, and we lay them at your feet, Father, knowing full well that you are our God. You are a great God. God that is deserving of all our praises and all our adoration. So we worship you and we glorify you in this place today, O oh Lord Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
face. You are our Savior, Lord. Worship you. 
before your feet, God, and lift you high in this place. The name above all names, the one who gave his life for us to set us free. We run to you, God, and we worship you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where would I run but to the throne? great the love, how strong the hands that holds us, beautiful, so beautiful, let me sing, so here I bow, so here I bow, to lift you high, Jesus, be Fight in all things for all my life. I am yours forever. Yours, we are yours, God. Oh, God, let me sing. There is, there is a king.
Oh 
give you honor. We give you praise. This is our God. We praise you, Lord. Come on, church. Just open our lips and fill this place with worship to Him from our heart. Hallelujah. Oh, you are Lord, oh Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift our voices and feel this praise with worship. a new song hallelujah we worship you lord we glorify your name oh we praise oh thou o lord our god above all the the things that's happening in our midst may it be in our personal lives and even if you read the news 
wars, economics. You can list all those things. One thing we learn in all this event, even our personal life, is that we recognize that man has no capacity. Man has no capacity to control and save himself. You know, despite of all our effort to manage situation, even if you put all the world leaders around us, they are still limited and they will fall flat. They might do some change, but if it's man-centered, you know, it's just temporary. It's just a scratch. But with all these things happening, as God's people, we have hope. Amen? We have hope. We have a God that's full of grace and mercy. We have a God that we can run to and we can cry out to Him and heal the cry of His people. We have a God who reached down to us despite of our uncleanliness, despite we are not worthy yet, He showed His mercy and love. You know, because of who He is, because of His promises, we can look forward with hope and anticipation. Like the song that we save, this is our God, that He is the servant King, our Savior, our Lord. And now respond, we respond in worship, in honoring Him. You know, in Isaiah 25 verse 9, it says here, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for Him that He might save us. These people waited. This is the Lord. We have waited for Him. Let us be glad and rejoice in His salvation. One clear sign of God's people is those, are, those people are those waiting upon His Savior. And we know that we have a Savior. Amen? Amen. And it says here in verse 1, O Lord, You are my God. And the response of a person who is worshipful, I will exalt You and I will praise Your name. For You have done wonderful things. We thank the Lord for His goodness. Amen? And this time of our worship, what we're going to do, we're going to find a prayer partner in twos. The first thing we're going to do is tell that person wonderful thing that God has done. One thing, I know you have many things. But at the same time, tell, some, tell the person, probably if you're open, just share to him the thoughts of what you're struggling. And then we're going to pray for one another. Amen? So just find somebody, a prayer partner. One, a testimony of his goodness. And also pray for one another, an encouragement that we have hope in the Lord. Hallelujah.
Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day, this afternoon that you have brought us here in this place. We know, Lord, that you are here. We thank you, God, for this opportunity that we can worship you freely with singing, with songs. And we thank you, Lord, that we can pray for one another. I pray as we gather here today, speak to us through your word. Let your Holy Spirit, Lord God, convict us and encourage us this day. Give us an anticipation that we know that you will move in a mighty way in this place. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say, Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Praise the Lord. Good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. It's good to see you once again. At bakit nga po ba tayo nandito ngayong linggong ito? Tayo po ba ay pinagpala ng ating Panginoon Diyos? Amen. So, I believe na lahat naman tayo ay naranasan yung mga pagpapala ng ating Panginoon. And that's the reason why we come to this part of our uh, uh, service, yung ating pagbibigay ng ating tithes and offerings sa Kanya. Uh, just please join me in reading Matthew 5.16. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Let us all read our response to the word. As we give our tithes and offering, we pray that God's light will continue to shine through us in this dark and fallen world. May we choose to show kindness and compassion toward others, extend our blessings to those in need, and share God's love to the lost. Amen. Let us all pray. You are worthy of all our praises, O God. And for that, God, we thank you for your mercy, your loving kindness, your faithfulness, and your goodness to us. God, salamat po sa katapatan mo sa amin sa buong linggong ito, Panginoon na, Lord, hindi mo kami pinabayaan. You sustain us with your grace and with your mercy, Panginoon. Lord, whatever seasons we are in right now, we just declare, God, that you are sovereign Father and that you are in control over everything that is happening in our lives, God. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity na kami ay makapagbigay sa iyo, Panginoon, ng aming mga kaloob. Lord, may these resources be used for the furtherance of your kingdom to reach us out for more, more souls, Panginoon, that, Father God, it will help, Father God, your, your church, Panginoon, sa aming mga pangailangan. Lord God, bless, Panginoon, yung mga nagbigay nito, that, Lord, thank you for, the, for their faithfulness, Panginoon, and that, Lord God, salamat sa mga source of income namin, Panginoon. Salamat sa patuloy na pagpapala mo sa amin, Panginoon Diyos. Lord, we pray all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let us all give cheerfully to the Lord. Afternoon po sa ating lahat. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Parang <laughs> Pasko na, magpapasko na. It should be more, uh, you know, joyful. Anyway, marami pong salamat sa ating Panginoon that we are gathered here once again in His uh, sanctuary. And uh, parang kailan lang po ay Sunday, another Sunday has come, and then next month ay November na, then after that, December na. Yay! <laughs> Ang bilis ng bilang, ano? That's how excited. Kasi nga po, uh, 
uh, Christmas is coming at marami pong uuwi sa atin. Anyway, we, were, we are glad that every one of us are here today and we would like to welcome our first time guest. But before I will uh, call on their name, is there anyone amongst us here who came back for the second time or third time? You are still our guest, but you want to come back. Is there anyone in our midst today? Malapo. And never mind. Never mind. Ma, mga old timer, but will still be mga magkakapatid sa ating Panginoon. Today we are blessed with seven first time guests. And we are just so thankful that uh, they have, uh, ano po yung pinagpaunlakan nila ang invitation ng ating mga kapatid. So, sa amin pong mga first time guests, tatawagin ko po ang inyong mga pangalan. Pwede pong tumayo po kayo kung saan po kayo nakaupo. At uh, manatili po kayong nakatayo at ipagpe-pray po namin kayo pagkatapos ng tawagin ko kayong lahat. So our first time guest today, may I call on Mr. Phoebe Clint Lapera. Mary Joy Avila. Fe Fuertes. Helen Tonda. Joe Di Guzman, they are a couple, and Anisio Di Guzman. And last but not least, we have Harry Cabod Cabadonia. And of course, just like what I said this morning, we were glad that our Pastor Sur and his, her, his wife Arlene is here with us for the first time as well. So sa amin pong mga first time guests, mamaya po pagkatapos po ng service, your host will be hosting you for a light refreshment. And kung mayroon po kayong mga katanungan or inquiries about the church, feel free to ask them. And if there's any prayer request na gusto nyo pong ipag-pray nila, you can ask them as well. So if you want to come back next Sunday, coming Sunday, or you want to stay here, feel free to come. This is a church that will welcome anyone who wants to join us. So my brothers and sisters, let us stretch forth our hand to our guests today. Lord, we thank you for our first time guests who came for the first time. Lord, they may think that they have acknowledged or they have just been invited by their friends. But we believe, Lord, that it is you who ordained this day that they will come and join us and they will hear the preaching of your word today. Our prayer for each one of them, Lord, is that may they know and understand who is this God whom we are worshiping. May you reveal yourself to them, Lord. Help them to understand and know you, that there is a Father, God the Father, who is so loving towards them. You know them by name, Lord. You know their need, and I pray and we pray for them that may you meet all this need according to your riches and glory in accordance to your will. May you extend that blessing of provision to their families, Lord, wherever they are. May you protect them, Lord, in their workplaces here in Singapore, and thank you for your blessing to be upon them. May they go out of this place filled with joy filled with blessing that comes from a loving Father. This we ask and pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Makakaupo na po tayo. Praise the Lord. Just turn to somebody and tell that person, Ikaw na na naman katabi ko. Palagi na lang tayo magkatabi. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let me just highlight a few announcements and we'll dive into God's Word. Firstly, invite you sa ating um, morning, early morning prayer at Sabaya Zoom. Sa Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 5 a.m. to 5.45, then Sunday at 6 a.m. Nandun po yung Zoom details and we have been posting it sa ating mga chat and even Facebook. Also, this coming week, we will not have online podcast prayer, but instead, we will have it here, 7.30 p.m., face-to-face, -face physical. We want to bring you all back. If you're available and you have no work, join us, 7.30, 9 
this coming Wednesday, we will have a time of prayer uh, dito sa place na ito. So I'm excited on what the Lord is doing in our, our means. Also, we'd like to uh, encourage you, if you know that Living Word and you've been praying about it, and you feel at home in Living Word Fellowship, uh, we have this membership class coming this 5th November. Um, if you've been praying and you know this, this is your family na, and you know you're growing in the Lord, you're so much welcome to join us. So take note, membership class 5th November, just sign up sa iConnect or contact Tita Eba. Also, um, tanong mo mo sa katabi mo, uuwi ka ba? <laughs> tanong mo, sige mo, uuwi ka ba sa Pinas? Oh, kung hindi, plano mo to. Yan, meron tayong church come to 6 to 8 June. Plan ahead. So we're telling you now, now is only October para makabili ng bagong chip na ticket. Yan, we will have our church come 6 to 8 June sa La Trinidad. Ito po. And uh, we're gonna go there, uh, take time to worship the Lord and reconnect with all our members na umuwi na sa Pilipinas. Man, a few things yan. Reconnect. Yan, reconnect with one another, especially those um, refired so that we can serve the Lord faithfully wherever God is placing us. And ayun po ang ating mga teams for this coming. So take note, 6 to 8 June, um, contact Sister Morel for more details. Uh, he give you paano pumunta and all those things. Yun ticket sa inyo, ha? So take note yan. <laughs> yan, ticket sa inyo. But hopefully, many of us be able to join. Alright? Ito po. And later on, Mayroon po tayong uh, seminar or uh, conference sa ting. Ito, Building a Healthy Marriage. So, sabihin mo sa atami mo, punta ka ha. Yan. After this service, we just got, gonna have a short break. This is open not just for the married people, but also the single. Sinong single? <laughs> Ito naman, hinay-hinay lang. Okay, yung mga single, pakinggan niyo muna ang mga nangyayari sa marriage life. And then prayerfully, pray, pray, okay? Punta doon naman, masyado naman excited. Building a healthy marriage. Healthy marriage. So later part, part one. But may part two tayo. Sinabi ng ating elders, masyado namang ano na, saving my marriage. Pinaltan ko na. Somet sometimes marriage is complicated. So, tinayin natin. So, half, after this service, have a short break, come back, and let's be blessed and be encouraged on how we can have a healthy marriage, especially many of us, our family are far away from us, especially o mga tayo nandito. Um, so take note po, ah. All right. Today we have someone special that will be preaching to us. Reverend Sulda Rosario is the Department Head of Ministry Enrichment of ICI Ministries, and he's married to Sister Ar Arlene. Nandito po siya. Yan, Sister Arlene, balakpaan natin. And uh, Pastor Sur is an ordained minister with Philippine General Council of Assemblies of God since 2006. He's a pastor, he's a family counselor, Bible school teacher, and he loves youth, mga young people. Kaya when you, when you see him, he still look young. He is a ministry consultant. Church education, leadership, and management. And he's been a, he entered the full time ministry when he was 19 years old. Uh, 19 years old. Mamaya, maybe he will be able to share what happened. 19 years old. And, you know, last year when we were planning what are the things that we're going to do, he was able to minister to us via Zoom. Tandayo, via Zoom. And he ministered to us. He taught us intentionally growing in faith, family resilience, and also resolving family conflict. So, yung po ang topic natin last year. But we praise God this year, we have an opportunity to invite Him and He is, he is here physical. Hindi na virtual. So, we thank the Lord for this opportunity. And before I call Him up, let's just pray for Pastor Sur. Let's pray. Panginoon, salamat for this afternoon that you have brought us. We also want to thank you, Lord, for the availability this opportunity for Pastor Sur and Sister Arlene to minister to us. We know, Lord, that you have a message for us today, and you're going to use him as your vessels, as your mouthpiece. So we ask, O oh Lord, that you anoint him, give him the strength, and as he stand here, you will, he will experience your Father's love as he look upon the church. 
And I pray, O oh God, that you would speak to each one of us, Lord. Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit. As we dive into your word, may there be conviction and even, Lord, encouragement and restoration as we dive into your word. So, salamat po, Panginoon. Anoint Pastor Sir, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's just welcome Pastor Sur. Right. Maraming salamat po ulit, Pastor. And thank you for the leadership of the church, for allowing us to minister with you. So, payat pa po ako nung dumating ako dito. <laughs> After two days, tumaba po ako dahil sa lagi kaming pinapakain. And thank you for that. <laughs> Walang naniwala. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. I hope that this would be a time of openness. You know, sometimes we do not really like what we'll, we would hear from the pulpit. No? But if the Word of God is preached, ibig sabihin, God is actively changing the hearts of people. And if we are open to it and align ourselves to what the Spirit is leading us to do, then we would see changes in our lives. This afternoon, uh, this afternoon, alas 12, 12.51 na nga, we will talk about being unstuck, okay? And the idea is to release oneself to forgive other people. I realize that forgiving other people can be difficult and it could also be messy. Pero hindi po ito katulad ng mga bata tayo when we were young and we were fighting, you know, the old people would say, okay, shake hands. Sometimes it takes more than just shaking hands, and it actually has to involve our deep conviction to really release other people and even release ourselves. No? When, we say when we say unstuck, it's actually the opposite of being stuck. So I think this morning I wasn't able to show this picture. So now it would be a lot easier for me to explain what unstuck is now that you know what being stuck is all about. Okay? So people get stuck for so many reasons, and one of the reasons could be unforgiveness. All right, so these are pictures of people, animals who are stuck. Naipit. Naipit. No? One time po, pinasakay ako sa likod ng van. Nakalimutan ko, malaki pala yung chan ko. <laughs> Naipit ako. <laughs> so my friend has to push me so that I could get in and get out. Sabi ko, oo nga pala. Feeling kasi payat. <laughs> so, I literally got stuck. So, I, I felt like, I feel for this dog. I, I could share his feelings. No? So, some of us are stuck maybe in our head, in our, in our thinking. It's not something physical. But we are stuck when we keep on, in psychology, there, there is this what they call rumination. When you replay over and over again the things that were done to you, and it's still very vivid how a certain person hurt you, parang may mga, your senses are all awake and trying to replay that particular moment, no? So you're ruminating. Perhaps you are stuck. Have you listened to yourself? What stories are you telling other people repeatedly? And every time you tell the stories, the stories are actually stirring up emotions. Sabi nga sa Tagalog, may, may bubog. Ito, talagang stuck na stuck. Itong elepanteng ito, ano? Also, this one is stuck. Also, this one is stuck. Alright? So, literally, to be stuck is being unable to move from one particular position or place or unable to change a situation. When you think about certain people and you could not let go of the memory or of the pain that person inflicts on you, o yung iba parating pa lang yung tao, malayo pa lang nanginginig na yung laman mo at kumukulo na yung dugo mo, well, maybe you need healing for that particular person. If you feel significant pain whenever you share stories about your pain in the past, how your parents rejected you, how broken you got because of all your experiences, and even if it happened long time ago, and it seems like you are not healed from it, then you really need to ask God for inner healing. All right? Yung iba, pag nagkwento po, yung nanay ko kasi, pinabayaan kami. Nung bata ako, ilang taong ka na? 60 na ako ngayon. I mean, I mean, you're a senior citizen already. Malapit na kayong magkita ni Lord. And all that you could think of are all the people who did harm. My friend, I hate to tell you this, but you are stuck. And by that, you need God to really release you and to allow you to experience His freedom. You are, you are not able to move. 
And for, the, for that reason, and maybe one of the reasons could be uh, you, you are not able to forgive them. Also, families can also get stuck in their emotional pain. Let's just try to look into this, no? So, you know, in a dysfunctional family, these are the five qualities that you would always find in a dysfunctional family. When they say your family is dysfunctional, there are movements. Everybody may be moving, but not according to design. When the mother is actually becoming the head of the home, usurping the authority of the father, then that is dysfunctional. Meron pong tinatawag sa dysfunctional families na parentified child eh. A parentified child acts as the third parent. So sasabihin nung isa, Nanay, um, ay, payagan mo naman ako ah. we're going to a field trip. And then sabi ng mother, o oh, magpaalam ka sa ate mo, kasi sa kanya nang gagaling yung baon mo. So in that sense, another child, a child, no, was elevated to a position of parent. Ang tawag dyan, superhero, o kaya yung iba, parentified. Pero however you want to put it, that is still a sign of dysfunction. My movement, pero not according to design. Because as parents, you're the one who's supposed to let your children go to field trip, and it's not the role of any sibling to take on that role. But because nagdi-dysfunction daw po yung family, ganun daw po ang nangyayari. So in a dysfunctional family, they don't talk, they don't feel, they don't touch, they don't trust, they don't resolve anything. Mag-aaway yan mamaya, kinabukasan parang walang nangyari. Nabulabog ang buong baryo, nagbatuhan ng plato, kutsara, tinidor, rep, lahat na lang, binato. And then the following morning, everybody looks, we're okay. Okay na yun, without even discussing what happened. And some people would just dismiss that as, okay na yun, wala na tayo, okay na tayo. But those are signs of dysfunction. You don't talk about it, you don't feel what the other person is feeling, you don't touch, you don't empathize with other people, you don't trust, you don't resolve, so you keep on blaming or deflecting. No? So these are signs. Gusto ko, ba, gusto ko sanang sabihin, congratulations, dysfunctional ang family nyo. Wag naman. <laughs> Di ba? If you have those signs, then sana hindi naman po talaga nagdi-dysfunction. Hopefully, makita natin yung, yung need for healing din ng atin pong family. Ano? Then, sa so next po, these are actually signs, no? To, in order to find out if your family is dysfunctional, these are the signs, no? These are the signs. You know, sometimes signs are obvious, Okay? The, nung una, sabi ko, sabi nung uh, nag, nagpa-check up ako, no? Sabi ng uh, doktor, alam ko na naman ang sasabihin ng doktor, uh, mataas ang timbang mo. <laughs> Tinanong ko, Dok, overweight ba ako? <laughs> sabi ng doktor, gusto mo bang sagutin ko talaga yan? <laughs> Hindi ba obvious? So I think many of us would say na, ah, okay naman kami. But let's look at the signs, and maybe the signs are telling you, medyo nakaka, nakakalungkot lang, pero maybe the signs are telling you that, oo, oh, oh, gusto mo bang sabihin ko sa'yo na baka nga nagdi-dysfunction ang family natin? So if people in our family appear to be okay, but are not okay, one point na kayo. If shame is used to control, nakakaya ka talagang bata ka, hindi ka gumaya doon sa mga pinsan mo, hindi ka gumaya sa kapitbahay mo, nakakaya ka talaga. All right. And then, scapegoating, deflecting, and blaming are common. Nobody assumes responsibility. So, pag tinanong ka, ba't ngayon ka lang? Ang sagot mo dapat, ba't si ate? Hindi mo tinatanong. So, somebody else uh, is at fault, not me. So, I rather blame or deflect the blame to other people. Performance-oriented. Anak, mahal talaga kita kasi valedictorian ka. E paano po kapag hindi po valedictorian ng anak nyo? So the love now is actually a quad. The love that the, the, the children feels love, that feel loved, if they perform. So the more they perform, the more they feel loved. And what if they perform and then the results are not good? Are they not loved anymore? Sa Pilipinas po, pag sumali ang bata sa isang contest, ang tanong, ba't ka sumali sa contest? Para po sa pamilya ko. Bakit? Para po maging proud sila sa akin at para mahalin po nila ako. Are you telling me that your love, that the love of your parents are conditioned by your performance? So ang mga bata po magpe-perform because the more they perform, the more na yung pamilya po nila, eh mas mahal sila. Tama po ba? 
sa, sa Pilipinas po talagang performance oriented tayo. I don't know if here in Singapore they display the, the medals and the trophies. Pero sa Pilipinas yan, pag pumasok ka ng bahay, unang bubungad sa'yo yung mga medalya. Tapos pag may bisita po, pinapahanginan yan. Tinatapatan ng electric fan para magkalansing. Pag kumalansing na yan, kailangan sabihin ng bisita, ay, ang talino pala ng mga anak mo. <laughs> Tapos syempre, dapat false humility ng konti. Ah, oo nga eh. <laughs> Pero sa totoo lang, sa niya buti naman napansin mo. Kasi mahalaga yung performance eh, no? Sa atin. Well, anyways, also, qualities of dysfunctional families, unspoken and inconsistent rules, communication is always coded, therefore people are not able to express their emotions. So there's always emotional numbness and suppression and adult-focused. Alam niyo po yun, ang sabi, bata ka lang. Alam niyo po yung mga panahon na pag tinitigan tayo ng magulang natin, dapat alam na natin, Psst! Gumanyan nanay natin, patay. Pag yung nanay ko, nagganyan na. Tapos meron talagang taas na ng kilay, naku, papaluin ako niyan. Pero ngayon, yung mga bata, kahit tingnan mo, sabi, ha? <laughs> ano? <laughs> kahit gumaganong-ganon na yung nanay, hindi na po nakukuha. Pero bak, because maybe we grew up in an age where it's, the, it's an adult-focused or adult-centered world. The problem po, even I think yung types of parenting po, the kind of parenting we had, in our family of orientation, yung kung, kung saan tayo po ang mga bata, maybe that contributed to the dysfunction and that may have hurt us also. Different types of parenting. One that is becoming more popular is uh, helicopter parenting, where you are hovering. I think the dynamics of this particular generation of parents, if you are an OFW, is that meron po kayong Facebook at meron po kayong mga online Uh, ways to communicate through them online. I always tell the story, mula pa po kahapon, na ako po ay anak ng OFW eh. So, pero yung panahon namin, yung panahon na cassette tape pa, i-record mo yung sarili mo. Dear Papang, maayos naman po kami dito. By the way, pahingi pala ng sapatos. At saka nga po pala yung chocolate. Yan. Ganun lagi. Tapos susulat ka, yung panahon na susulat ka, wala pa pong email, susulat ka, papang, may sakit si mamang. Three weeks po yun bago matanggap ng tatay ko. Pagbalik, magaling na yung tatay ko. <laughs> magaling. Pag natanggap ng tatay ko, magaling na yung nanay ko. Pero kailangan malungkot siya kasi yun ang binabasa niyang sulat. Ganun po yung uh, conditioning sa amin. I think the dynamics that you now have, the advantages of uh, technology, is that you would all the more want to be controlling. Magagalit kayo sa mga caregiver. Nanay, tatay, ba't yung pinayagan yan? Hindi mo kayo nagpapaalam sa akin kasi you want to compensate for the distance. The idea is that dahil malayo ako dyan, kinakailangan mas in control ako and actually you're mitigating your own guilt kasi malayo ka sa, magulit, sa mga anak mo. Possible din po yung sinasabi natin na commodified love. Dahil wala ako dyan, anak, wag kang mag-alala, nagpadala ako ng sampung balik bayan box para sa'yo. Lahat ng mga nakuha ko dito, pinadala ko dyan. But that's actually to communicate na because I'm not there, I want to compensate that by more commodities. Ang problema po dahil hindi naaayos yan, ang tingin ng mga bata, lumalaki silang spoiled kasi ang nakikita nila, ang pagmamahal ng magulang is equated with the commodities that are being sent to them. So I understand, alam ko magpapadala pa rin kayo ng sapatos, pabango, sabon, insect killer, ano pa ba yung lahat ng pwede nating ma mapadala sa Pilipinas. But I hope that you clear your message that this is not a measure, this may be an expression of love, no? But I hope that there is beyond, there is more to the gifts that are being given to them and that they are really feeling connected with you, no? So I'm sure if we would take time to ask the stories, I'm sure mauubos po ang tatlong taon ng maalaala mo kaya sa lahat ng kwento po natin na, di ba, the struggles that you have being part of the OFW community and your children as well. No? We did a study on that while we were in Ateneo for this uh, training namin sa Center for Family Ministry. So very unique ang inyo pong demographics. But I thank the Lord for sustaining us. Now all this put together, contribute to the dysfunctions po na meron tayo. And that could actually contribute to hurts that we have 
in our hearts. Kinukwento ko po madalas yung akin pong mga peklat. Sino po sa inyo ang walang peklat dito? Wala po ba kayong peklat? Nakakaingit naman po kayo. <laughs> Ako pag nakita niyo po ang aking tuhod, it's a work of art. <laughs> Abstract lahat, no? Tapos ang peklat ko nandito dito. I would always classify my peklat into three. Number one, ito pong dito sa akin, ang tawag ko dito ay peklat ng pagkakamali. Nagkamali lang ako, nahulog kasi ako sa hagdan eh. Tapos kinuwento ko sa mga kaibigan ko, nahulog ako sa hagdan. Sabi ng mga kaibigan ko, kumusta yung hagdan? <laughs> Mabait yung mga kaibigan ko talaga, di ba? So nahulog po ako at ito nagpapaalala sa akin that I paid 200,000 pesos just to have this operated on. Ang pangalawa ko pong sugat, sabi ko dyan, excuse me for the term, ayan ay peklat ng katangahan. <laughs> Meron po akong peklat ng katangahan dito, excuse me sa term, nakarecord yata tayo. But yung idea po kasi, pinagtulak po kami ng sasakyan dahil tumirik yung sasakyan. Hindi naman sinabi sa amin na pag umandar na, bibitawan. So ako po, <laughs> nakaladkad ako dun. So meron po Pag naisip ko yan, ang engot ko naman talaga. <laughs> Dapat naman pala kasi bumitaw ka eh. Di ba? Yung, yung po ay peklat ng katangan. Ang ikatlo po ay peklat ng kasalbahian. Ang peklat ng kasalbahian sa akin ay galing sa aking pinsan na we, naglalaro ng sako. He set it on fire and then tumilamsik sa akin yung isang part dito. So I could always remember the stories about this peklat. I'm sure you all have your peklats, no? Or your scars. However, if you still feel the pain, if you still, maybe not the physical pain, but if I tell the story like this, alam mo yung pinsang kong yan, hindi ko talaga mapapatawa dyan. Because when we were five, when I was five years, he was seven years old, ganito ang ginawa niya sa akin, it sounded like it happened yesterday. And even if you have your scars healed already, you can still feel the pain. Then maybe on the outside, everything is okay. But the inside, your heart, your mind needs healing. So whenever you tell stories na meron pong bubog, kumbaga, then definitely you are in need of God's healing. So ito pa pong story ni Mang Crispin. Natatawa lang ko dito sa kwentong ito. This was actually by Joey Velasco. He's a social critic. He made the Last Supper, a painting of Last Supper, this time replacing yung mga apostles with children. This time he, he created this. He painted this, si Mang Crispin. At ang title niya po dito is The Prodigal Son. He met Mang Crispin in the home for the aged and everybody hates Mang Crispin in the home for the aged. Napakasama daw ng ugali. Sabi ng mga kasamahan niyang matatanda din. So nobody wants to get near him. And then when he tells about the story, when he asks him about the stories of his family, sabi niya, ay, wala yun. Nagagalit daw si Mang Crispin. For some reason, na-hospital si Mang Crispin. Parang na yata. So itong si Joy Velasco, dinala niya po dun sa hospital itong si Mang Crispin. And then he realized that the attending physician had the same surname. Kay Mang Crispin. And then later on, he realized, hindi rin alam ng doktor na lolo pala niya si Mang Crispin. And then, akala niya, babalik po yung lolo, yung, yung apo, hindi na po bumalik yung apo. Ibig sabihin, ayaw nang makita yung kanyang lolo. And then sa kanyang pagtatanong-tanong, sobra daw kasing sama ng ugali nitong si Mang Crispin na maging ang kanyang pamilya ay tumalikod sa kanya. So when he was thinking of subject for the prodigal son, ang naiisip niya si Mang Crispin, sabi ko, nakakalungkot naman. Matanda ka na, tinatalikuran ka pa rin ng pamilya mo. Hanggang sa pagtanda ba, wala bang paghihilom ng lahat ng mga sugat na nagawa? I, I, I think it's tragic that you're getting old without resolving the pains that you have created in, your, in, in the past years or in the past decades. And I think that's the tragic story of Mang Crispin. So although people, especially family, may wound us, so we talk about emotional wounds, we talk about scars, yung physical uh, uh, expressions may still be there, no? pero the emotions run far deeper than the scars that we see on the surface. But we don't have to get trapped for, for life in our pain. Therefore, we ask God's grace to help us to release ourselves. So, palayain natin ang sarili natin. 
So tama yon palayain natin ang ibang tao, pero baka din po kailangan nating palayain ang sarili natin from unforgiveness, bitterness, and hate. Because He can release us, God can release us from our pain, let us also learn to release ourselves from any hurt that imprisons us. No? I'd like to first read Genesis 15, 19. We know what happened with Joseph. He was betrayed by his own brothers. And it was actually, I think, the worst form of deception is deception by your family members. And it's something that actually changed and altered the way or the course of your life. And you are trapped. You may be trapped forever in that guilt or, or in that uh, hatred. No? But look at this. This was the time when the brothers, when Jacob already died, and then the brothers were afraid that he might uh, get vengeance no? for, for all the brother, what the brothers had done. It says here, but Joseph re replied, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? As for you, what you intended against me for evil, God intended for good, in order to accomplish a day like this, to preserve the lives of many people. Eventually, Joseph realized that there was a greater purpose to all his pain, and he was able to make sense of it. No? Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him. You could sense the guilt of the brothers because they were terrified at his presence. He is now the next to Pharaoh. No one is higher than him but the Pharaoh. So he could do anything. And he could actually call the soldiers and have his brothers killed for what they had done to him. But look at this, verse 4. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be dis distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for setting me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. I pray that the Lord will help you find new meanings to your scars. I hope that when you look at them, you don't just tell stories of, you know, somebody did this. You know, my sister did this, my brother, my cousin, my mother did all of this to me. I hope you, God would help you change your stories so that whenever you look into your scars, you would also testify, you know, God healed me from my rejections. God healed me from all my pains. So what were stories, the scars that represent your stories of hatred, I pray that the Lord would change that and that the Lord would give you fresh eyes to look into them no longer to remember the hurt, but to see that God has healed you. Amen? So I'd like, I'd, I'd like us to consider, bibilisan na po natin ito, tatlo po itong kwento natin, kasi natakot ako, hindi baka hindi na ako bumalik dito eh. Kaya, baka pagkatapos ito, you can no longer preach to this church. Or at least, I have given you three characters. So okay na po yan. But stuck, these are people who are stuck and trapped in, our, in their pain. And these are cases of three wounded families, and perhaps we could relate with their stories as well. The first I know, you, I, I know you know the prodigal son, but do you know the righteous, the self-righteous brother? All right? Look at what the self-righteous brother struggled with, no? Sabi sa Luke 15, The older brother became angry and refused to go in, so his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, Look, all these years I've been staying, I've, I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. Who among us feel that we are better than other siblings? Ako yata ang pinakamabait sa amin. I think we have that. I want you to listen to your stories. Siyempre po, pag nagkwento tayo, laging ang bida, tayo. At laging ang kontrabida, yung iba. So understandable, understandable, no? Pero this person really has all the right to get angry. But hindi niya po nakikita, no? Tingnan lang natin what, what is causing the pain. Because his brother brought, uh, brought insult to the family for taking his inheritance and wasting it all away. So this brother now is actually stuck. So the prodigal brother, alam natin ang nangyari sa kanya. But the older brother is also stuck in his hatred for the prodigal brother. Diba? Stuck in his pride for being the dutiful, devoted, and deserving brother. 
You know, it would be insulting when we take our inheritance if our parents are still alive, no? Pero yung mga naiwan sa atin, ako ang nag-ayos, ako ang nagligpit, ako nag-alaga kay nanay at tatay, nung lahat, kayo, wala kayo dito. Ganyan na mga drama sa Pilipino eh. Kinakailangan pag may conflict, merong sumbatan. Kailangan sabihin ko sa inyo na naghirap ako, kayong lahat, wala dito. We're, what we're actually saying is that we're the family hero. And by that, implicitly what we're saying, we deserve all the entitlement that we could get from our parents. However, the problem here is pride. You are stuck with your pride because you are dutiful, I am devoted, and I am deserving. I am much better than all my other siblings. And then I do not get any inheritance. Kaya nang gagalit. Ako po ang daming mga families that ang, ang causes ng dispute ay mga family inheritance. If ever you would be having lands or ari-arian, bago po kayo umalis, hatiin nyo na. Pero totoo po yun. It would save a lot of troubles for the future generation if their parents would leave behind subdivided lots rather than squabble among themselves, fight among themselves, who gets the larger share. Kasi dun lalabas ang sumbatan. And I think if we have been faithfully doing our job, we never caused headaches to our parents. Somehow we feel entitled. No? We feel entitled that we're the, we're the best among the siblings. What we never realize is we may be stuck in our own pride. The second story is the story of Jacob. It's actually Jacob. Actually, the short of this passage is that he was running away because he deceived his own brother. Pero surprisingly, when he was running away, the Lord showed himself to Jacob in a dream. And this is what this uh, verse is all about. You know? And then sometime later, the Lord actually worked in his heart. After some time, some 20 years later, the Lord asked him to return. But returning home is not as easy as it, uh, as it seems. Kasi kinakailangan niyang i-work out. Kailangan niyang harapin yung kanya pong kapatid na galit na galit sa kanya. Sino po rito ang tumataka sa mga taong galit na galit sa atin? <laughs> Maybe the reason why we're in Singapore is because we're running away from all the mess that we created when we were still in the Philippines. Pero there's hope in this story. Despite his failures and everything, God was with him. And God shown him mercy. However, si Jacob po, we find in him somebody who's, who has deceived, who has caused pain by deceiving his brother Esau. He took his birthright and Isaac's blessing. Kaya nga lang, ang nangyari po kay Jacob, it's a life cut off. Sa family system po, may tinatawag na cut off. When somebody has to run away, stay away from the family because of the wrongs that they did to their family members. Kapag kayo po, meron kayo biglang nabalitaan na hindi kayo nagkukwento nanay tungkol di sa tito natin yan. Bakit hindi nyo kinukwento yung kapatid nyo? There's a story behind that. And perhaps they don't want to tell you the story. Alright? Tayo pa naman Pilipino, pag ayaw sabihin sa atin, inaalam natin. Pusong marites. Di ba? <laughs> Kailangan malaman natin yan. Kailangan malaman natin yan. But also, attitude. There's attitude, no? The stuck for a long time in anxiety. I mean, he had success in his life. He was able to grow his resources. And for 20 years, the Lord blessed him as the Lord promised. Yet the Lord directed him back. So success is not complete unless we close the doors. Unless we resolve the pain, unless we settle the family issues that we had. And then the third story is Joseph. We know what happened. Sabi niya, do not be afraid. We know what happened because his brothers uh, betrayed him. So what was the pain? Pain of betrayal and deception from his brothers. And he was stuck. For a long time, he was separated. He spent years in prison. And although he was actually second, the governor of Egypt second only to Pharaoh, no? he was separated from his family. And all of this is because his brothers betrayed him. Sometimes we suffer the consequences of the injustices that other people did to us. Kaya nga nakakainis eh. 
Kasi for example, nandudun ka sa train, bigla kang natapunan ng kape. You have to go to the office na talagang basa yung, yung damit. Ang nakakainis, hindi ko naman kasalanan to. But I get to bear the consequences of other people's action. And that actually adds to my pain. And possibly, the attitude was, possibly, he was plotting in his head how to bring his brothers to justice. But you know, there are also some lessons we could learn from these three characters or three families that may be helpful for us so that we could be released from our own, from our being unstuck. Number one, these are some learnings that we could learn from the self-righteous brother. Number one, awareness of others' feelings. Ano kaya ang nararamdaman ng aking kapatid nung wala na siyang makain? Ano kaya ang nararamdaman ng kapatid namin nung nandudun na siya at the end of the line? He was actually rock bottom and he was experiencing all this. What must he be feeling at the time when he was eating among the pigs? But the righteous brother, the self-righteous brother never felt that. When you are so full of pride, you will not empathize with other people. Actually, the mindset is booting nga sa'yo. Mabuti nga sa'yo. If that is your attitude, then you would never be aware of others' feeling. I think God is teaching us through the story to, have to feel the pain of other people, to feel what they are going through, to feel the pain of the prodigal as much as we are dealing with our own hurts. Another lesson we could learn from the self-righteous brother is the awareness of one's feelings. So awareness of others but that is actually resting on your awareness of yourself. Tama po ba? Ako po dahil malaki ako, iniisip ko, baka nasasaklaw ko yung space ng katabi ko. Iniisip ko, baka mapanakop ako. So I tried to squeeze myself. It was actually a reaction from a trauma. Trauma talaga eh, no? Kasi pinasakay kami ng jeep. Tapos sabi ng mga, nung barker, ah, papupuno pa, pasok pa, pasok pa. Eh ako, squeeze na squeeze na ako dito. Ang sabi, pasok pa daw, pasok pa, pasok pa. Tapos sabi nung driver, papasok ka ng papasok. Tingnan mo nga yan, oh. Sikip na, sikip na. I was aware of that the whole time. I was aware that I'm big. I was aware that actually somebody may come in. Kaya nga minsan, pag pumapara ako sa jeep, nakasenyas na akong ganyan. Dalawa po. Babayaran kong dalawa. Well, that might be a negative example of self-awareness. But I know the dynamics that would happen if you mix me with people, if you mix me with, if I get into the Jeep. My point is, are you aware of what you're creating? Some of us, when we are right, nobody can stop our mouth. Eh, bakit? Tama naman ako talaga. Eh, dapat kita naman. I think a number of churches get divided over that for the good reasons daw. Eh, tama lang naman yun. Sinasabi ko na yung gusto kong sabihin. Ah. And ganun din tayo sa family natin. Walang preno. Can you smile at the person next to you? The sweetest smile that you can make and tell that person, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Baka you are not aware that you're blabbering and blabbering and criticizing and criticizing and then say, eh, bakit? Totoo naman ah. And then we never realize that we became overly critical. You are not aware of how your thoughts, your actions, your size, kung makaupo ka, ganito ka nakalaki sa jeep, baka ganyan ka pa. Oh. <laughs> Mahiya ka naman. So the point that I'm making is maybe my actions are hurtful it's something that the elder brother did not realize. It's something that he was not aware of because he was insisting that I was hurt and he deserves what happened to him. So awareness of God's, of one's feeling, please refuse any thought of superiority in the family. I was reminded in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 13 is the chapter we love. But if you look into the context, it's sandwiched between 1 Corinthians 12 and 14. These two chapters talk about gifts. And if you go to 1 Corinthians 12, the problem there is there are people who feel that they are superior compared to other people. The other side of that are people who feel they are inferior. All right? 
The problem, however, the inequality happens because some people say that they have the more spectacular gifts. Alam niyo yung pagkubakanta po tayo, tas maganda boses mo. Talagang sa congregation, ito birit kung birit eh. How great thou art! How great! Talagang enunciates. <laughs> thou art! And then some people who could not really sing just quiet themselves and say, it's okay because we're worshiping as a body. But if you feel that I'm better than him because I sing better, then you need to go to 1 Corinthians 13. So imagine the gifts that are supposed to build us up. These are what's causing us to get divided because somebody feels they're superior than other people. In the body of Christ, we are all the same and we are all equal. Salamat na lang. Meron kaming ganyan po eh. Nung kami, nag-crusade kami dati, meron kaming uh, kaibigan, kasamahan, ang galing mag-preach. Pero pag nag-preach na, naku, magpapa-altar call na yun. Kaso medyo hindi talaga maganda ang boses niya. Parang, bless na bless ka sa kanyang preaching, pero pag nagpa-altar call, naku, mag- ah, may staccato pa. Gumaganong-ganong pa, pero wala talaga sa tono. Hinihinaan namin. Sabi namin, alam mo, ang galing-galing-galing-galing-galing mo mag-preach. Pero pag kumanta ka, kami na lang, ha? <laughs> Pero okay lang yon, Kasi gift yan, eh. Kasi we are all in this together. It might be your gift is in this area. Pero my point is, please be aware of your own feelings and of your thoughts and your own giftings. Because we are a body. We are a family. Alright? Even if I insist that I'm right, that doesn't make me really, really right all the time. And sometimes, even if I'm right, I need to shut up at times. All right? A wise heart knows the proper time and the proper procedure, the Bible says. So smile at the person next to you again. <laughs> shut up! <laughs> shut up! Dapat ganun. Dapat more than praise the Lord. Dapat nagsisigaw tayo, shut up! <laughs> Dapat ganun. Ganun tayo. All right. Tama-tama po yun. Wala na akong pipritsan dito. <laughs> Pauwi na ako sa Pilipinas. <laughs> so, okay na yun. <laughs> okay, di na ako makakabalik dito. <laughs> Alright. But anyways, ang sabi po dyan, awareness of God. Maybe God is working in the person. Maybe you could not sense what God is doing because all this time, you were focusing on your own pride and that you are, that you feel you are entitled and all this, no? You do not process your negative feelings in the light of the Father's forgiving heart. Balikan natin yan mamaya. With the life of Jacob, I realize, I find it surprising that he entrusted his life to God at the moment when he was running away. And what surprises me there in the story is that God was with Jacob. God even affirmed the running away. And all I can sense here is God's mercy. You know, God's grace is God's love for the undeserving. God's mercy is God's love for the pitiful. Ang awa ng Panginoon, ang biyaya ng Panginoon ay ang kanyang pagmamahal para sa hindi karapat-dapat. Ang awa, ang biya, ang mercies, ang biyaya ng Panginoon ay para sa mga kaawa-awa. And what I think is at work here is the mercies of God upon Jacob. All right? But he entrusted his life. He entrusted his wounded life to God. He said, then Jacob made a vow, if God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God. I know I'm running away, but I have a new understanding of who God is. And I have no one else to help me in this difficult journey. Ang hira po kasi the anxiety of leaving behind your family and the anxiety of the unknown. And nobody here is to help me. But I can rely on God, and the mercies of God are new every morning. So I don't know, maybe some of us are running away from things we did at home. And we just have no other recourse but to, to stay away from all these people because we pain them. Not that we are, we do, we do not want to resolve things, but maybe sa, sa Pilipino pa, nagpapahupa. Kasi masyadong escalated yung mga emotions, and hindi natin alam kung saan ang punta nito, at somehow you're running away. I don't know if that's you, but I can always look into the mercies of God to help us, not to tolerate us, but perhaps provide us that space.
for us to reflect and see what could be corrected or rectified in our life, no? But I also realized this sa life po ni Jacob. Ensure that no doors are left open. God is blessing you. Tingnan niyo po yung katabi niyo. Uy, ayamanin. Ha? Mukhang nagparibad. Wow. So, mukhang the Lord really blesses you. Yung mga pastor po na natatabi sa akin, isa po sa mga nakikita sa kanila ay lumalaki yung tiyan nila. And then, ang sisisihin ako. <laughs> Sabi ka, kasama mo kay Pastor Sur, tingnan mo yung tiyan mo, lakalaki. Pero nakikita kasi ang pagpapala. Tingnan nyo yung katabi nyo, halatang halata ang pagpapala. Ngiting nagpariband. However, ang totoo po, the reality is, the reality is, no matter how far you go, if there are doors that are left open, you will always be anxious. Alam niyo po yung hindi mo alam kung naiwanan mo ba yung plancha sa bahay? Kahit anong layo mo na, kahit anong gawa mo, kahit ilang pasyal ka pa sa Sentosa, o kaya dito sa Universal Studio dyan, lagi mong iisipin, naku baka nasunog yun na. Ah. Ibig sabihin, unsettled ka eh. Kasi may mga pintuang nakabukas. And maybe, what I'm saying, again, I'm not saying na talikuran mo lahat yung mga pagpapagkapalpakan mo, para wag mo na silang intindihin. What I'm saying is, I think the Lord is so merciful that God gave you a space to grow. God gave you success. But the Lord is really serious in changing your life that He's asking you to go back and return and close those doors. I realize this, that when I'm growing in the Lord, He would require me to also be reconciling of my relationship with other people. I could not run away from others. I need to go back and settle the issues with him. Yun po yung nakita nating lesson dito kay Jacob. And then he entreated God. He asked God. He was really desperate. And he prevailed against God. You know, in one of their meetings, nag-usap sila ng Panginoon. 20 years later, the Lord spoke to him, go back. And he went back. But the, 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 the night before the encounter with Esau, he was really anxious. And then sabi niya, nag-pray siya. For some reason, may tinatawag pong Theophanes, or the Lord appeared in human form and he was actually struggling with a, with, uh, a man, sabi doon. And then, sabi niya, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And then, sabi, because you prevailed with God, I'm changing your name. You, you are no longer Jacob. You are now Israel. Ang ibig sabihin po ng Jacob, nakipaghablutan eh. Ang totoo pong ibig sabihin nun, the grabber of heel. Kasi nung pinanganak si Jacob, Hawak po niya yung paa o sakong ng kanyang kapatid. And it actually became a mark from him, manghahablot. Lahat na lang sa iba kinukuha, mandaraya, mandarambong. Pero, you know, the Lord really gave him success that the Lord even changed his identity. He is now called Israel because he prevailed with God. He struggled with God. And that means he is now a new person. And that's what God can do, No? Pero kasama nung pagsasabing you are now Prince of Israel, e eh, pagharap doon po sa mga obligasyon natin. Sa amin po sa counseling, we have this love plus justice equals peace. Patawarin mo na. Humingi naman ng tawad. Ang tanong, gusto bang magbago ng tao? O nagsusori lang? So kung may love, dapat may justice din. At para nang sa ganun, may, meron tayong peace. So we need to entreat God to really change us until He deals with our pain. And then when we look into the life of Joseph, what lesson can we learn? It's a movement from scars to stars. Ito mga peklat kong ito, hindi na to scars. These are stars. Gusto nyo ba makita? <laughs> now, ibig sabihin, these are now testimonies. Yes, it reminds me na ito, pagkakamali, ito katangahan, ito kasalbayan. I can really tell you the stories. Pero mayroong isang story ang hindi, natata- hindi nakikita. The story of God's healing. Yes, you had pain. Yes, you had failed relationship. Yes, you had gone through all this. But have you also seen that God has healed you? Ilang beses ka nang depressed at sabi mo, naku, wala nang pag-asa sa akin. Alam mo po, pag depressed ako, maganda niyo pong gawin to pag depressed kayo. Huni ng daliri. Taas lahat ng daliri. Sige po, napaka-effective nito. Napaka-effective nito. Ilagay sa ilalim ng ilong. 
At sabihin sa sarili, Aba, buhay pa pala ako. <laughs> so kahit po, napakagaling yan. Kita nyo, nawala yung inyong mga... Kasi sa kabila ng pagiging OA natin, pag nilagay mo yung daliri mo sa ilalim ng ilong, nararamdaman mo yung hininga ka pa, buhay ka pa pala. Kahit akala mo kahapon, even if I thought yesterday I would not make it today, I, I was always telling the story that I was suicidal. That's the reason why I changed path from finishing my fifth year in engineering that was actually my first year in the Bible school. So I was a pastor since 19 years old, but when I was 18, I was suicidal. I was actually thinking about ending my life, but at 2 o'clock in the morning, at 2 o'clock in the morning, I felt like there was a cold air inside my room, and I felt like somebody wrapped his arms around me, and then what I could not mistaken is a voice in my heart telling me, I will not leave you, I will not forsake you. So after that, because of that, I realized that maybe God is calling me and I wanted to give my life for, to Jesus really and be serious about my walk. And that's when I felt the call of God in my life. So what started out as scars or failures, the Lord has changed that already into stars. Yung mga peklat na yan ay hindi lamang sugat kung hindi kagalingan. And that is a testimony that God wants us to understand. We also want to assert, from asserting one's right, to authentic forgiveness. Joseph need to deal with this. So when we forgive people, do we really forgive people? Um, I forgot the man who said that. There was, there's actually a book, Peacemaking in the Family, Ken Sande. He was talking about four commitments when you forgive somebody. Number one, do not bring that up again. Ulitin ko po, baka hindi nyo naintindihan. Huwag mo na pong ibalik uli. So yung asawa mong sinabi, mong pinatawad mo, you cannot say, ginawa mo na naman yan. Pang 500 times mo nang ginawa yan. If you forgive the person, you don't bring up and pull up dried or old skeletons and say, ginawa mo na naman, ginawa mo na naman. And I will not let this get between us. So nakalimutan ko yung dalawa, but I think those two are important. If you are forgiving, then you choose to forget that. And you will not bring that up to your marites prayer meeting. You know what a marites prayer meeting is like? Uy, ipag-pray naman natin si ano. Bakit? Kasi meron siyang problema, nangangalun niya siya. Talaga? Sino? Tara, pag-pray natin. That's a marites prayer meeting. All right. But what I think we need is authentic forgiveness. And then from fight, from insisting on I should exact my revenge, I should really get even, kailangan an eye for an eye, leave it to God. Alam ko mahirap yan. And uh, when I say that, I'm not making a blanket state, a statement that we will not hold somebody to justice. No, that is important. But there are cases when you are consumed by so much anger, and you are imprisoning yourself. Ang sabi ni Joseph, am I in the place of God? So let the Lord deal with them. Amen? So what actually, last na po ito, what actually released them from being stuck? You know, it was God all along. It was God all along. You know how the Father has demonstrated yung love niya dun sa prodigal son? And it's the same love that extends to the a self-righteous brother. You know how the Lord responded to Jacob? Sabi niya kay Jacob, I will be with you. I will watch over you. And then, ang sabi niya kay, kay uh, uh, Joseph, you know when Jacob was blessing Joseph, ang sabi niya, Jacob, uh, Joseph, you are a fruitful vine. You had all kinds of hostilities, but you stayed strong because of your God. Because of the blessings that God has given you. Ang ganda nung metaphor, nung pinagpala ni Jacob, yung anak niyang si Joseph, sabi niya, you are a vine. A vine that climbs over the wall. Many times we ask the Lord to remove our walls. Lord, ano ba naman to? Ang laki-laki namang boulders ito. Hindi ako makadaan. Sometimes we're asking for breakthrough. That we could actually break through it. But sometimes, hindi po ganun ang sinasabi ng Lord. Maybe you haven't realized that the Lord may not remove the wall, but He has given you the strength of a vine 
to climb over it. Tingnan niyo po yung katabi niyo. Mahilig sa akyat bakod yan. Ilang bakod na ang natawid niyan kasi ang daming walls sa dinaanan pero buhay pa din. Ni po ba? Because that is the strength that God gives. Maybe maybe this is an encouragement for you because you have been praying that the Lord will remove the walls and he is not doing that. Maybe you have to recognize that God has given you the strength to climb over it. Maybe the struggle is there. But look at you, you are still surviving, being sustained by the grace of God. And all you can do is just to take that, the offer of God, to release us from all our pain. And sabi po dyan, God can release us from all our pain. Now release yourself to God and be free from all your pain. Amen? I hope that you would have that vision of you and your family unstuck. Naipit ka ng matagal na panahon and you have imprisoned your life into this negative emotions even if you have all the right to get angry but you are actually being in prison. God can set you free and He's actually set us free because of Jesus but we also need to release ourselves and release forgiveness to other people and also ourselves. Amen? Let's all stand. Let's all stand. There's a song that says, I speak Jesus. Can we do that? Can we speak the power, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ over our own anger, over our own bitterness, over our own negative issues? And let's just pray that the Lord would uh, set us free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's sing this song as a prayer song. And let's believe God for freedom. Not only for ourselves, but also for our family. Jesus in the streets 
Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name. Jesus. Shout Jesus for the mountains. Jesus in the streets. Shout Jesus from the mountains. And we want to experience the power in our lives. manifest his power over your family and over your life if you see a lot of dysfunctions in your own home maybe even in your own family i just want you to raise your hands because there is hope in the lord and for all the pains that we cost other people and all the pain that other people cost us there is always healing there's always hope there's always an answer even to the most difficult questions God is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Lord, I'm praying for families represented here. Especially many of us, Lord, if not all of us, our families are back in the Philippines. We pray, Lord God, for your power to reach out to us and to reach to them as well. We pray for children who feel that they are left at home. We pray, Lord, for those who may be suffering from dysfunctions. But in the name of Jesus, I pray that they would experience your healing power. We pray, Lord God, for every relationship that is on the rocks. We are praying, Lord, for marriages that are broken or about to break down. We are praying, Lord God, that your mercy will extend to us. And just like Jacob, maybe some of us are running away, Lord God, because we have done a lot of mistakes. But just like Jacob, we call on your name. And we believe, Lord God, that you can heal us. Just like the elder brother, we may be self-entitled, we may be self-righteous. But we pray, Lord God, for a spirit of empathy. We pray that we could feel, we could feel what, what our hurting brothers are feeling. And I pray, Lord, like Joseph, we would climb walls. We would be victorious. We would be victorious. Could you pray for the person next to you? Just pray for the person next to you. Come on pray for the person extend God's blessing I pray for you my friend I pray that you would climb over the walls I pray that you would experience God's victory in your life I pray that you would be successful I pray that God would really touch you and bless you but I also pray for the courage to shut down the do uh, doors maybe you need to close some doors and I pray for the courage to close them and face your past allow the Lord to change that as well Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Let's continue to pray. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Come and move in this place, Lord. Steering our hearts. Your name is healer. Your name. 
this afternoon Lord you have seen the burden that we are going through in our marriages in our families in our children but we thank you we look upon you truly you are full of grace and mercy and we have hope in you God that you can turn our scars to stars Lord God you can there's nothing impossible to you that you can bring healing oh Lord God and I pray Lord you have heard our prayer and now cry our hearts that you will move in a mighty way Lord Lord I pray that you increase our faith give us that word Lord give, teach us Lord to trust in your character to trust in your promises Salamat Panginoon for this day Lord God we thank you that the freedom we have in you that we are released Lord from our bondages because we have Jesus Lord God Salamat Panginoon we give you praise Lord God Hallelujah Let's just raise our hands and receive the benediction. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you that you are full of mercy and grace, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. You know every story, Lord, in this place. You know every struggle, but Lord, despite of those things, we know, Lord, that you are writing a beautiful story. A story that you will turn that, he, that, that pain. A story of healing. Showing your mercy and your love. Salamat, Panginoon. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Those who be staying for the um, um, seminar, you may be seated. But those who are leaving, you can go ahead. But uh, just turn around, tell that person, God can turn your scars to stars. God bless everyone.